Hey y'all, it's Kara with Goat Fort Farm, and today is, well, not a conventional video of mine, but I'm not feeling too well, and I thought maybe we could go walk around and see what the goats are up to. Some of the chickens are out here scratching around, seeing what they can find. Hey girl, <laughs> please don't peck me. <laughs> now, walking around outside really is my self-care, and so I figured, you know, feeling a little under the weather. What better time than a Sunday afternoon to just take a moment and walk around outside. And I don't see where most of the goat herd is, so we can find them in the process. All right, up in here, I've got two of my tiny junior does. I've got Dottie and Phoebe. Phoebe's over there getting some hay. And the reason that they are put up in here is Phoebe's actually in heat right now. And all of the tiny little bucklings are trying to breed her. And I don't know, some of the bucklings, even though they're only five weeks old, they look kind of mature and I just don't want to risk anything like that. So these two cuties are hanging out in here. <laughs> and you can see Dottie even trying to mount her almost. That's the interesting thing about heat is sometimes the does themselves, the ones in heat, or the does around them will start acting bucky in response to those hormones, which is kind of silly <laughs> to watch. Now, a lot of times the moms and babies want to go graze up there, but I'm not seeing them, so I'm thinking they might be down by the barn. So, we're gonna get our steps in today. Let's go. Shiloh, come on, let's go. <laughs> She's just trying to lay down, which I can't blame her. I cannot blame her for wanting to just chill out. It's a beautiful day. We've had an ice storm here and then a flood the last few days. I mean, it really came down. We probably got at least, probably, probably at least six to eight inches of rain, which, you know, where we live isn't very common. Here you can see one of the natural springs on the property. Well, it's also a ditch too, <laughs> combined with it. And with all those rocks in there, it helps filter out the water. And you'll see up here, it is so clear got all this moss and shrubbery and well I don't know how clear it looks to you on camera but it's actually pretty clear we hear frogs around here all the time it's pretty cool to come out at night and listen to them Shiloh decided to join me on this walk which I do appreciate Ooh, let me get out of the mud <laughs> and you can see it's just a flowing And Shiloh is a little puppy. She loves playing in flowing water. And you may have seen Scout's videos where he now plays in water a lot too. But isn't that just beautiful? Man, you gonna drink it all, Shiloh? I'll show you a part that flows, uh, has a little bit more of a little waterfall to it. Come on, Shiloh. Let me find a spot to cross. Now the goats, they're gonna jump over this type of stuff, but the dogs will just walk right through it usually. <laughs> yep, she's not worried about any water. She's a good girl. She really guards her goats and chickens. And she's sweet towards us, which was really important to us when picking out a livestock guardian dog. Yeah, you're a good girl, Shiloh. You ready to keep our walk going? All right, let's go. Just take a second and listen. You can see it keeps flowing this way. Okay, just pull up a chair and have a seat. And there's a lot of small waterfalls in this. Let's see it falls down again right here. Right there. 
Very clear water. Just keeps on flowing. And what it'll actually do is go past this tree here and go towards our small pond, which ironically is usually larger or more full than our large pond. Here. See the water continue to flow. Oh, that's beautiful. Then it's divided by these rocks. Just keeps on going. That's a pretty spot right there. Aha! Uh -huh. At some point, goats were here. So here's a better look at the small pond, which you can see kind of behind those trees, those tall pines there. And there's a creek that runs behind it that we fish sometimes for fun. I don't know why, but I just love fishing in a creek because like, you just never know what's gonna be there and whatever's in the creek probably won't be in that location for very long. And while sometimes we don't find anything in the creek, I've actually caught a few little catfish in it. So I don't know, um, there must be some big body of water or a lake someone has that flows into that when it overflows because there's interesting stuff back there. We'll have to do a fishing video sometime. Okay, we're making our way towards the large pond. Or It's not that large, but that's just what we've always called it. And goodness, there's not a cloud in the sky. I'm glad I wore my SPF. The goats love pine trees, and it's actually good to let them eat on them because the pine is a natural dewormer so they'll eat on those needles and it helps them well probably have fresh breath but uh, in all seriousness it helps keep them from having an excessive worm load so thank you pine trees shadow's checking out the pond this is the first time the pond's been full and man uh at least half a year I haven't seen it be this full in a really long time. But we did get a lot of rain for days on end and it's finally full. Look how dense this is with tiny little pine trees. On both sides it's like that. So we'll probably need to cut that back so that you know more of them will actually make it. Because if it's overcrowded then the individual trees they're not going to get enough light and nutrition so probably need to cut a few of those back but i really like pine trees well, i guess the question of this video can be what is your favorite tree my nana she sure loves dogwoods and i don't really know what my favorite tree would be i guess my favorite tree would have to be a cherry blossom tree whenever i went to DC I saw a lot of those and they're just so beautiful and you don't really see them around here my dad he likes the mimosa trees and for some reason we don't have one out here even though they would live <laughs> hey Shiloh you making it through the tall grass Yeah, this is why we have so many goats and why we need more goats. There's just not enough for them to eat it all down yet. And I know we should probably force them to rotationally graze. I've got some electric fencing that I use at the Bucks pen right now. And I probably should bring it over here and have the does rotationally graze using it because otherwise 
I mean, when are they ever going to come eat all this? Like, when? And then if this isn't being eaten, we probably just need to do a controlled burn of it. That way we can get some fresh stuff growing here. Because once it gets warm, there will be stuff that grows through that. But uh, it's not going to be as much as we would have if this was uncovered. Like if that dead stuff was burnt off. Okay. I don't see any goats. So let's keep walking. Since we're talking about trees, another tree I really like is... Well, I'd really like to have any type of fruit tree. I think it'd be awesome to not just have animals, but to have a garden and be able to grow foods that we'll actually use and be more self-sustaining that way. Uh, and so I think a good way to do that would probably be getting some fruit trees. We have some harsh temperatures here. We do get all the seasons, but in the summer especially, it gets really hot here. Um, lots of days over 100 degrees. and So I need to really think about what would do well in this climate that we're in before getting any. And we don't have a greenhouse or anything like that. So I don't know, just something to think about towards the future. I think that's always a good thing to do. Look at how different this part of the property is. When we first started our walk, we saw some pine trees, but in this part, it is almost exclusively pine. It's higher elevation, um, lots of older pines. Not like insanely old, but good age and size. And if you notice underneath the trees, there's not much growing. And so those pine needles, they can mess up the acidity of the soil, making it difficult for other plants to grow there. In addition to just, well, pine needles cover pretty much all the ground here. So it's, I, th I always just think it's pretty neat seeing the difference between this side, which is heavily pine versus if we look back this way and there's less pine trees and less tree coverage in general, we have a lot more of those grasses growing. Okay, we're making our way to where I think the goats have to be. I haven't seen them anywhere else on the property, so they've got to be up here. There's a water source up here and also lots of brush, sets so of like blackberry bushes that well, they're not like blooming right now or anything. Obviously, it's winter, but um, they do like still eating on that old brush. I see goat berries on the ground, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and there's a good water source up here. This is what I was talking about a little bit ago, but it's quite stagnant. For some reason, that area just holds water really well. Okay, let's walk up here. Now, if I don't see them up here, we're just going to have to call for them. My goat call consists of the sound yip, yip. <laughs> it's kind of loud. I don't want to do it if I don't have to do it. Well, y'all, I hate to say it, but I'm not sure where they're at right now. So I'm going to start calling them and walk around and see if I can find them. Let's see. Oh, I think I see them. Here they come. Come on, goats. Come on. Them little stinkers. Okay. So we have this fence here. And um, my family, uh, we on both sides of it. Typically, typically they stay on this side. So um, they must have thought the grass and weeds and brush and you name it must have been greener over there. Though it doesn't look like it. But isn't that how it is? Isn't that how it is? It doesn't matter that the grass isn't greener. It's the principle of getting what you didn't have. 
and leaving what you do have behind. Come on! Come on! Do one of those babies get on the wrong side of the fence somehow? That's crazy. Hey! Uh, thanks for coming when I called. Uh, honey, have one of your babies get on the other side. No, that is a little trickster right there. It's okay, keep coming. Come on. Here, this way, this way. It's okay, little one. I don't know how she got under there. It's okay. Okay, let's see who we got. We've got Emma here in the front. The silver doe. She will kid around March 10th. So that's actually my husband's birthday. And so maybe maybe he'll get some goat babies on his birthday. We'll see. And then we got Oreo and her Oreo minis and Tootsie and looks like everybody's here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the babies will just bop that udder like crazy. And while it looks pretty violent, what they're trying to do is stimulate sugar to let down some more milk for them and apparently it works and then opal opal is the only other pregnant doe we have right now and she is the first doe born here on the farm to ever have babies so super exciting she is due on february 7th so like within two weeks, we should see her pop. Her mom has rationed twice before uh, and had twins both times. But I don't know, I'm just astonished by how much of an udder or, uh, Opal already has. And she's so round. She is a very healthy girl. And these babies are just growing like weeds. It's crazy. They're, they're all really healthy. Oh, Rocky, our original goat baby on the farm. The first goat I ever got. <laughs> we aren't forgetting you, Rocky, don't, don't worry. <laughs> Honey must have let her babies finally drink. They sure are pestering her. Well, y'all, thanks for joining me on the walk around this afternoon and don't forget, if you have a dream, go for it.